Joe Biden has warned that the world is facing a true prospect of Armageddon, the highest risk since the Cuban Missile Crisis, saying Putin is deadly serious about using tactical nukes in Ukraine. He's not joking. I know. I've been talking about this for a little while. I'm not a prophet. I don't know. What I do know is that based on what we think we know, I know it's complicated in war, right? Is that Vladimir Putin is not going to lose this. A good friend, Luke Rydkowski, sells a t-shirt that says, truth is the first casualty of war. And that's a reality. I don't know what Biden, what the U.S. intelligence service or military is planning. I don't know what Vladimir Putin is planning. I don't even know if the news coming out of Ukraine is real. And tell me this, for those that are watching, comment below and let me, let me know what you think. Do you think the news is correct that the Ukrainians are winning? Or do you think that it's all BS and Russia is actually winning? Because I've seen it go both ways. Now, here's what I'll say in that regard. We're not talking about Ukraine and Russia. We hear the news. Ukraine storms into Kherson. Ukraine breaks the barrier. Ukraine, Ukraine shatters Russian defensive lines. Ukraine. You mean NATO. NATO supplied forces. NATO intelligence, U.S. boots on the ground, satellite imagery, specialized weapons and intelligence. So when you tell me that Ukraine is winning in this war, I can believe it. Because what you're really saying is that NATO, all of the nations in this military alliance are. But Vladimir Putin may not have the sophistication of weapons because they're just Russia versus NATO. Did I say NATO? Russia may not have the sophistication of weapons, but they do have nuclear weapons. I was watching a YouTube clip about Poseidon. This is the apocalypse weapon. It is the autonomous nuclear torpedo. Actually, I can just pop it up. This is a great video. This is by Covert Cabal. And it's, uh, can Russian, Russia's doomsday weapon be stopped? Status six Poseidon. So let me make sure you guys shout out to uh, Covert Cabal. It's a great video. And uh, they, they, they talk about the potential for this weapon to reach 100 megatons. And they show us this excellent video of whole, old archival footage of a nuclear detonation. It's interesting stuff. Well, in this video, the reason I find it so fascinating is that they mention, actually, I don't, I don't know if I can find it, the Strategic Defense Initiative. This was Star Wars program. Uh, I, I believe it was Star Wars program. The SDI. Strategic Defense Initiative was to stop nuclear weapons. And so the reason that Vladimir Putin created, there we go, here we go, Strategic Defense Initiative. The reason that the Russians and Vladimir Putin particularly are so keen on this Poseidon weapon is they're trying to bypass our defenses. And this is what caught me as alarming when the report came out that the Belgorod submarine had been deployed. Here's what I think. I think that if Vladimir Putin launched an ICBM, we're talking 50-year-old tech. You think the U.S. isn't prepared for that? We got the Iron Dome. We got that. I mentioned this the other day. So what do they do? They make a, tub, uh, they make a torpedo from a submarine. I was going to say tub marine. A, a sub, submarine launching a torpedo. It's 24 meters long with a nuclear reactor giving it unlimited range. And it can slam into the coast and cause a massive tsunami. We think we know. We don't know. And so I, I will say, I wonder about what Joe Biden is trying to say. When he comes out and says the prospect of Armageddon is, is real and Putin's not joking, there's one thing I see. I see a man trying to scare people, utilizing the fear of war to justify his expenditures in Ukraine. I think there's a re very real prospect of nuclear war for sure. But I see, I see a president, intelligence services, an establishment uniparty warmonger class saying, ooh, they're talking about nukes. How about we use that? The Daily Mail reports President Joe Biden said on Thursday evening that Vladimir Putin was not joking about using nuclear weapons in Ukraine and said the risk of Armageddon is the highest it has been since the Cuban Missile Crisis. He delivered his doomsday warning at a fundraising event for Democrats at the New York home of James Murdoch, son of media mogul Rupert. It comes amid growing fears that Putin is backed into a corner and could use tactical nuclear weapons to push back advancing Ukrainian forces. Quote, we've got a guy I know fairly well, said Biden at the reception for the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. He's not joking when he talks about the potential use of tactical nuclear weapons or biological or chemical weapons 
because his military is, you might say, significantly underperforming. I agree with that assessment only based off the surface level news that I've seen. You can come out and say that Russia is doing better. I'm sure they're doing way better than the media is portraying. See, all these these videos, they're really annoying where it's like just obvious propaganda. It's like Russians are surrendering. Shock. They're fleeing. And it's like, yes, I'm sure that's true, too. Why don't you play the videos of Ukrainians fleeing and surrendering? Because I'm sure those exist as well. It may be worse for Russians, for the Russian side than the Ukrainian side. Ukrainians are going to have. I, I, I think Ukrainians are going to have a better understanding of why they're fighting than the Russians. Plus, the Ukrainians are backed by NATO, so I can believe it. Look, it's 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 simple human behavior. Russians are invading the eastern region. They're being told that there's Nazis and that they got to liberate this. At least that's what we think we know from the press. Again, I don't know. It could be all pro- propaganda. But either way, an invading force is going to have lower fighting morale than a defensive force. To put it simply, if the U.S. Uh, here we go. How about this? Would you go fight in Ukraine? Yeah, no, you probably wouldn't. And there's a lot of people who are deployed to Poland and are helping. They're probably like, I don't, I don't, I don't know why I care about this. What if they stormed the beaches of North Carolina? Yeah, then you might think differently. If someone was invading us, heck, even I would be like, tell me what you need. I'm, I'm not going to stand by and allow an invading force to come onto my into my country. I got problems with the with the establishment, all that. But hey, man, you know, it's like when someone insults one of your siblings and then you're like, hey, I'm allowed to insult my sibling. You're not. That's what it's kind of like. It's like, hey, I can rag on Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden's got problems, but don't you dare come here because I'll be, you know, I'll I'll do what I can. I'm not going to pretend to be like a great fighter or anything like that. So probably best left to people who have better military training than I. But I would do what I can. If, and, and I think most of you would agree if someone dared come onto to American soil. But think about what that means for Ukrainians. They, they like their country. They don't want Russia coming in. Russia's coming in. Now, I'm sure there are many people in the eastern region who do like that Russia's coming in. They're saying like Russian installed officials and things like that. And I'm like, dude, if there are Ukrainians that are taking up these positions, they're clearly happy to have done so. So they support Russia and they prefer Russia over NATO. But anyway, it does seem to me that there's good reason to believe Russia's ground forces aren't performing the way many thought. In which case, tactical nukes. Why not? Russia wants to win this. They could pepper. You know, here's 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 one thing I think you should consider. Maybe the Russian military is not underperforming. We're hearing that Ukrainians are storming the, the, the lines in, into the eastern region and they're pushing Russia back. What do you think Russia would do? If they were preparing to use nuclear weapons, I don't mean ICBMs. I mean, tactical nukes, nuclear artillery, 10 megaton bomb, 100. Kil- I'm, I'm sorry, not 10 mega, 10 kiloton bomb. Now, 10 megatons would be absolutely devastating. Uh, 10 kiloton, 100 kiloton. I think uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki was 15 kilotons. So let's say Vladimir Putin's going to use a 10 kiloton nuclear artillery. It'll be comparable to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And he's going to wipe out along the borders of these regions. Well, he'd pull back. He'd pull back his military, let the Ukrainians run in, and then he's not going to blow up his own people. Do you think that Vladimir Putin would be satisfied with being the king of nuclear waste? To be completely honest, yeah, I think he would be. I think Vladimir Putin would. These are lower yield. OK, so these are you know 10 kiloton. It's massive, very massive. But it's not going to cause it's not going to like wipe out entire cities if they do it in rural areas along the border. Ukrainian forces rush in. They're like, yay, we're winning. And then Putin goes now. And then you get just a peppering of nuclear artillery right along that stretch, wiping out Ukrainian forces. And then Putin says, OK, now advance. You got it, it just you don't know, man. We don't know. It's hard to know. We'll never know. I don't trust Joe Biden when he's talking about this stuff. I don't trust him because. I, he, they, they may just be trying to scare all of us into supporting their war to think that that Russia would nuke the United States. I don't believe it, especially with the SDI program. You know, we've 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 got to have something there was in, in the video. They show like satellites launching interceptors slamming into the ICBMs. Newsweek says 
Desperate Putin could nuke six Ukrainian cities to try to win the war. Yeah, I absolutely think so. Quote, I am worried that Putin is being backed into a corner on Ukraine as his armed forces face defeat. Professor Eric G. Sweden said he could easily choose to lash out with tactical nuclear weapons in a desperate attempt to change the outcome. My suspicion is that he will not make a demonstration strike, as some have proposed, because a demonstration strike just shows that you're unwilling to use your nuclear weapons. That's a really good point. Using tactical nuclear weapons on the battlefield is difficult and require well-trained soldiers to exploit the use of such weapons. The Russians are not in any position to take advantage of such strikes. The most likely use of the weapons would be to hit a half dozen cities in western Ukraine, damaging the ability of weapons and supplies to flow in from Poland or Romania. Wait, he's saying Western Ukraine. Man, he makes a good point, and that's freaky stuff. That's freaky stuff. Supplies from NATO are coming in through Poland. And so I talked about the fear that Russia could strike Poland to shut down the transport. Fair point. The first thing he'd do is he'd hit he'd hit Western cities in Ukraine, disrupting supply supply lines. Not only that, he could target just roads. If Putin were to strike at a series of roads, it's going to severely disrupt the ability to bring in supplies, albeit temporarily, but that could be enough. And if he sustains a bombardment, man, Putin's holding back. Let me just say it plain and clear. Putin is holding back. So when they say that Russia is losing, yeah, maybe. But, you know, imagine it this way. There's a six foot five ripped heavyweight dude and there's a handful of scrawny dudes swinging at him and he's got his hands up and he's just backing away slowly, taking a few swings, hitting a few guys, but, you know, blocking, taking some hits and everyone's laughing and going like, yo, he's losing, he's losing. And then you're just like, dude hasn't even taken a swing yet, bro. He's been doing light jabs. Wait till he, he, he sends in something hard. That's Vladimir Putin. The strategy he's using, it's minimal. If he starts using, he doesn't even need to use a nuclear bombardment. There could be strikes along Western Ukraine disrupting supply lines. He hasn't even done that yet. So you have to wonder what it is he's doing. They say tactical nuclear bombs are significantly smaller than the strategic variety created to devastate cities and are designed for battlefield use. However, if used, the weapons could break the taboo on nuclear warfare that has been in place since the 1945 U.S. attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The historian said tactical nuclear strikes would probably not result in Ukrainian surrender, which would mean a frustrated Putin will be inclined to escalate and even use more tactical nuclear weapons. To deter this, Sweden said Western powers should make clear that nuclear weapon use will not stop them from supporting Kiev. Did you see what Zelensky said the other day? We opened with this on Timcast IRL. He called for NATO to engage in preemptive strikes against Russia. Man, I, it, how do you avoid this? North Korea is doing, we got right here, North Korea missile tests. How do we avoid this? What is the path towards de-escalation? I don't see it. Joe Biden, NATO, Western powers have a bloodlust, blood pouring from their mouths. They want war. Afghanistan's done, but they will replace that, that stream of blood with Ukraine. For what reason? Now, Vladimir Putin invades. I get it. He starts this. For what reason is the U.S. involved in sending anything? It's because the war pigs have blood pouring from their mouths like depraved demons who desperately want to see death. And I'm sure they'll argue, no, we're trying to prevent it. You see what Vladimir Putin is doing? It's bad what Putin is doing. I, I like Ukraine. Ukraine's awesome. Been there a couple times, several times, actually. I have friends from there. The food's awesome. The people are great. And it's brutal what, what, what Russia did. And there's a question of principle. If the U.S. did not get involved, what would have happened? Russia would have walked in. End of story. That's a bad thing. But is it better or worse than nuclear war? Is it better or worse than dragging the entire world into a conflict? Look, man, the last thing I want anyone to do is lay down and let someone else come and steamroll you. But 
man, there's tough questions. There really, there really are tough questions. I think the Ukrainians should have stood their ground and just said no and never allow Russia to do what they want until the point where Russia realizes these people will lay down and die before they give in to what we want. I think the Ukrainians should have fought that. I guess the answer is they wouldn't. Not unless the West came in and supplied them. And that means Russia says, NATO, you want to go? You want to fight? Then we get the sabotage of Nord Stream. Obviously, Western powers involved. Around the world, they believe Nord Stream was hit by NATO, by the U.S. Only in the U.S. and perhaps the U.K. do people really believe that Russia blew up its own pipeline. So, yeah, we are in a war. Now, I can respect this one from The Washington Post. Jason Willick says Biden's instincts to avoid war are sound, even if Putin goes nuclear. Is that Biden's instinct? Is it? I can agree with the idea that no matter what happens, we should avoid direct intervention. And only when when Vladimir Putin uses a nuke on a city will we realize there is no winning here. If Putin uses a nuke, there will be no support. I mean, I got to be honest. If Putin nukes Ukraine and the U.S. preps nuclear strikes, I think this country would collapse in two seconds. I think there would be people screaming, no. And we're talking about the, an existential threat to human life on this planet. You got to understand the power of these nuclear weapons. It is not Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 15 kilotons. I think it was, it was kilotons, right? Maybe it was megatons. I don't think it was megatons. No, I'm pretty sure it was kilotons. Megaton bombs came later. Now we have bombs that are 1,000 times more powerful. And in fact, I mean, it's just crazy to think even more than that. We have 100 megaton bombs. The Satan II missile, they call it. The Russian missile. It's got a 50, 50 megaton yield. Some estimates say that Poseidon has a 100 megaton yield. I believe it. You know, the official reports say it's two megatons, considering the delivery mechanism, perhaps. But the Russians, they built Tsar Bomba, the biggest nuclear gravity bomb ever, and they only ever tested it at half capacity, a 50 megaton explosion. The devastation this, pan, this, this planet will face if we go into a nuclear war. Man, maybe then the aliens show up and turn everything off like that's that's the that's the old conspiracy theory, but probably not. There's not going to be some outside force, some savior. I think that if if Putin uses nukes, the West won't do anything. Maybe in Poland. Maybe maybe we'll deliver nukes to Poland and say it's on you. If the U.S. were to launch an ICBM or any kind of kind of nuclear strike, I'd be willing to bet you would see riots across this country and the government would collapse. I'm not even exaggerating because no one's going to sit back and be like, I'm ready to be annihilated in a nuclear strike retaliate uh, in retaliation by Russia. You know, we're not talking about war in a far off land. We're talking about them sending the bombs here. Who is going to be OK with that? I think regular Americans will lose their minds. Back in the day, war was some far off land. Man, shout out to the movie The Patriot. Uh, you know, I love to quote The Patriot. When Mel Gibson's character gets up and he says, mark my words, this war will not be fought in some far off land. Your children will learn of it with their own eyes. Such an amazing movie. He's talking about the Revolutionary War. And it was. The fighting happens outside your home, in your fields. It's so easy for so many of these Americans supporting war in Ukraine to wave their little flags because the fighting is happening thousands of miles away. What happens when the fighting comes here? What happens when an ICBM or some kind of uh, or Poseidon hits a coastal city? The people in this country aren't going to be like, yeah, let's get more of this. You know, when it comes to World War One and World War Two, it's easy for us to be like, we will go over there and assist. It ain't happening here. It's easy to support a war you will never see with your own eyes. It's much harder for those who have to go and fight it. It's much harder for the veterans who know, the, who, who know what it means. And it will be much, much harder for the American people when the strike happens in their country. And then you'll hear Vladimir Putin say, to the American people, you are not safe. The work you do, the support you give, it is war against us and we will not stand idly by. 
And then to these people, these warmongers who supported the, the, the conflict in Ukraine, the U.S. involvement, they'll say, please, no more. Please, it's not worth it. No one, no sane person would sacrifice Boston for Poznan. That was the quote, right? Well, how about this? How many Americans would sacrifice Dubuque for Kiev? None. So why are we engaged in this? You know, because you've got psychopaths, you've got addiction, you've got the military industrial complex. And these people are saying Ukraine's ours. You can't have it, Putin. And Putin's saying, you know what? Enough. You know what Putin's saying? Maybe I can. Who the fact that we're facing nuclear war. I just want to ask that question. To all of the American people, would you sacrifice Boston for the Donbass region? For the entirety of it. For Luhansk, for Donetsk, for Crimea? Would you sacrifice Omaha for Crimea? You don't even know where Crimea is. You don't even know where Zaporizhia is. I never even heard that word. And I'd been to Ukraine several times until the conflict started. People don't get it, man. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you all then.